set a, a, a legislative calendar for the reporting uh, on the economy by the statistical uh, service and by other entities in the system responsible for sharing of economic data, uh, financial data with the public. And that is to bring a level of certainty and transparency to the process. Uh, uh, the consultants, uh, it's, it's IDB, it's IDB, the IDB project, the consultants are very far advanced in their work. Uh, it, it would involve an entire reform and restructuring of the, the, of the, uh, of the, of the statistical service. Yes, and um, and we will and, and but that will you know be more akin to what you will see in developed country, so that you know the dates on which this information is coming out. Just as you will see in the United States, we will know when employment date is coming, when uh, GDP date is coming, and so forth. We are moving to that uh, process, and that work is at an extremely advanced stage uh, with with le just legislative and executive cabinet decisions to be made. The tens of thousands of Barbadians who are working must be asking, Mr. St. Clair, give us a clear statement. Are we going to be taxed anymore, considering we are already overtaxed? Well, uh, if I knew the answer to that, I would, I would tell you. But I don't know the answer to that right now. What I can tell you, though, is that it is not our contemplation for any major increases in taxes. Uh, in positions. In fact, we may very well be looking over uh, short to medium term if we can broaden the basis to reduce uh, some of the incidence of tax uh, on, on, on Barbados. That's, that's really where our, our goal is. But of course, as you know, we have a fiscal program in place. We want to achieve certain targets, and therefore we have to stick to what we have for the time being. Brian Talk about uh, aside from the bursaries, Minister, perhaps the other uh, hot topic is about income tax refunds. Yes. You have spoken to this recently and spoken of the, uh, the cash flow challenges mm -hmm. that government is experiencing. Given the fact that you're having to go with cuts, obviously to, to meet deficit targets, mm -hmm. is it is it a situation where now you have to extend the date because as we know the, the, the interest factor comes in at the yes. end of this month? And that's a very good point. Uh, of course, as you, as you know, um, our I should, should probably explain, I shouldn't say that you know. Um, refunds of all types, income tax, VAT, whatever the case may be, are paid from revenue. They are a, they are a docket on your revenue. Uh, there's, there's, there's no special fund that is kept anywhere out of which these returns are paid. They are paid from revenue. As revenue comes in, then those returns are paid out of the revenue. If there are cash flow or revenue shortages, then you could expect that there will be a slowing of that process. And that has happened. Some other issues have come in, come on board as well. The establishment of the BRA, particularly for things like VAT and so that have delayed those uh, returns processing uh, is a major issue, of course, and the limitation of human resources to do this. Um, but the principal issue has been the availability of actual cash to pay those returns. We have started paying returns. People have gotten some uh, of their returns as well. Uh, and we will continue that process apace. Of course, the point that you made is a very critical point, that interest kicks in after a certain point in time. And we don't want that interest cost to explode uh, and then you know, cause us a, a different headache. So we are trying as much as possible as we get uh, the revenue and we have the space to pay. If we can't do that uh, at a fast enough rate or a large enough rate, then we will have to look at other uh, instruments that may be necessary to uh, uh, achieve that process. Do you have a target in mind in terms of when you'd like to finish that process? Well, we'd like to finish it as soon as it's humanly possible. Um, but again, that's in keeping with the situation. And uh, I know it has been very disconcerting and discomforting for many Barbados, and of course we apologize for that circumstance. And we ask Barbados to uh, be patient. We know a lot of people uh, rely on that. We try to get out as certainly the smaller amounts uh, to those persons who rely on those to do things like back to school and so forth and so on. Uh, but it, it is it is a tight situation, uh, and we ask for the patience of our leaders in this room. Um, just a quick question. You're talking about the private sector and not the rank of leaders advocate, mm -hmm. and um, we've heard in the private sector some saying that the government is moving too slow. Um, some of the gaps are not closing quick enough. You had the um, public sector retrenchment, and we heard in the chamber when they had a meeting about um, going to the IMF for financial agreement. What are your thoughts on this? 
Well, I mean, we are not satisfied with the pace either. We feel the pace could be greater, but we have to look at the type of economy we have and deal with the realities of what we have before us. Uh, we have a very large social sector in Barbados that we've afforded uh, an extremely high quality of life in Barbados. And anytime you're doing major adjustment in an economy of this nature, it is going to affect those areas, education, health care, um, social welfare, community development, you name them, across the spectrum. And though you want to achieve targets in the fastest possible time, you still have to be mindful that you're operating within a fairly small space, with a fairly vulnerable population, that if you do too much too quickly, you can actually unravel the entire society. And that we do not want to have happen. <laughs> because there are persons who are you know, making it out on a daily basis, but not necessarily uh, so far above the water level that they can't slip and go. And we don't want that situation to happen. So we have to be very guarded and mindful of what we're doing. The second point is we have not been helped uh, entirely in this race to get our deficit down with the uh, or by the, uh, by the growth in revenues. These have been slower than we have anticipated. We understand that to some extent because um, if you do a heavy set fiscal program, particularly with expenditure cuts and taxation, you tend to find that aggregate demand contracts, and when that contracts, act economic activity contracts, GDP contracts, and you don't get as much as you want. We have to look at what the, all, the overall objective is. The overall objective is to ensure that we have adequate levels of foreign reserves, uh, foreign exchange in the country, to keep us in the game. That we have achieved. Now having achieved that, we're looking at ways in which we can work around those situations, use that stability to achieve greater levels of revenue through increased economic activity. Now, I heard the private sector speak, and I share some of their views, but I also have to make the point that we have, over the last few years, put so many things in place. I mean, incentives, concessions, waivers, partnerships, in which government has taken on a greater part of the risk than even the private people to accommodate the private sector, to invest in our economy. And that is why I believe that what one of the things that we would like to hear from the private sector more often it's not so much what government should or should not be doing. We encourage them to say that. But we also want to hear from the private sector, what are they proposing to do to get our economy going? If this is going to be a private, private sector-led economy, and I did hear the president of the uh, private sector association say he's not sure what uh, uh, words to the effect that he wasn't sure what it is that, that, that the government or the central bank expected from them in terms of a private sector. We, invest, we expect investments. We expect them, you know, people who are sitting on defense, and it's not all of them because there are some very aggressive people in the private sector who have not stopped investing. And we know who those persons are. But we are saying that the incentives have been there. We have done waivers of, uh, for the private sector of debt owed to government. Uh, whether it is uh, to vary the various taxes, VAT, uh, and so forth and so on. We've done those things. Uh, We're seeing the foreign private sector expressing higher levels of confidence in what is happening in Barbados than sometimes our domestic, uh, domestic forces. And in any IMF program at this stage, we do not think it is necessary. We believe that Barbadians can achieve uh, the objectives of the program that we have set ourselves. It is not going to be easy or painless, um, but I know that the alternatives which um, some people are clamoring for will be far worse than they may suspect. So um, we've measured the situation and we feel at this stage that um, that is not required at this stage. Do you believe the growth projections of, um, are you as optimistic as the governor in terms of the growth projections of, I think it was 2% and yeah. 2.3 or 2.5? Mm -hmm. um, do you, are you as optimistic, do you believe that we, we will achieve this? 2% two, two I think is what they have said in the release. <coughs> the central bank is the only institution in Barbados, the only single institution in Barbados, it has a complete uh, model 
through which they run uh, their figures and scenarios to arrive at growth projections. Uh, everybody else operates short of information in one area or the other. Um, uh, and so they make their predictions. Um, but they are forecasts. Uh, and the forecasts, as you know, are predictions and um, nobody knows really what will happen. Because you may say, I expect three projects to start and they don't start. We expect more tourists to come and they don't come. Uh, or, or we didn't expect them to come and more came than we expected. So nobody actually knows. It's just a projection. And people revise those projections and forecasts from time to time. I saw the IMF, for example, only a couple of weeks ago. Rever uh, reviewed and revised their projection downward based on what they had seen uh, for the first uh, eight months of the year. Um, uh, and they are the body that is considered to be, you know, the most expert in doing these types of things. So I think we should take it in that context. It's based on the information they have received and they can only operate on the information they receive. Um, it's based on their modeling and they have said 2%. It may be 1.5. It may be 1, it may be 2.5, who knows? What we have to do is to make sure we do the things that are important to help us achieve the growth. And then we can measure it and see how well we have done. And I think we've put some of those things in place. We, we, we're having a, a better winter season, it looks like, by forward bookings that I'm advised by the tourism people, both private and public. We have greater airlift coming out of our major source markets, UK, USA, Canada, and so forth and so on. That always well for bringing more people here because that has been an issue in the last couple of years. We know that investments are happening. We can see sandals. Um, my ministry, uh, officials in my ministry out of the BTI are very short, of, uh, just, just short of signing the final document for uh, the resources to be obtained from the government of China to do the Sam Lawrence project. Um, so we confidently expect that to get ahead as well. Uh, and there are other private sector projects which we know, uh, which Minister C.D. would have spoken of, that are on the cars to happen based on what we have been advised. So based on that, based on uh, what we're doing in alternative energy, based on the uh, what we've seen in the growth of non-sugar agriculture, and I'm very happy to have seen the numbers and to have spoken to them last Saturday at the BS annual conference. Based on what we're seeing, we believe that growth will return. Whether that growth will be definitely 1, 1 1.5 or 2%, uh, we cannot say. We can only give an estimate. And the estimate that the central bank has given is the one that, um, uh, that, 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 we, that we will all seek to work towards as we go forward into 20, into 2050. For those thousands of frustrated and uh, anxious CLECO policy holders, give us an update on, on the CLECO situation. Well, the Restructuring program of judicial managers has been approved by the cabinet and agreed to. We are in the process of uh, doing a short-term refinancing of uh, CLECO uh, because it's at the stage where it, is, you know, it needs an uh, injection of uh, not a huge amount of money but a small amount of uh, resources to keep it going. Um, the restructuring plan will be uh, approved by the court and executed um, jointly by the judicial managers and also by a new uh, company that is being put in place and that the government has uh, established to uh, manage the assets of CLECO in the various trusts that are to be created for such assets. How soon would this We start in all right now. And a joint statement should come out in another couple of weeks, a week or two, from government and the judicial managers explain this entire process. Minister, and you just mentioned that protecting, uh, about protecting the vulnerable. Mm -hmm. uh, would this mean that in the cuts that uh, you are proposing about um, non-essential aspects mm -hmm. across the ministries, it, would social care and health, um, similar areas, get a softer blow? Uh, well, what you do is, uh, naturally, as, as anybody would do, for example, as you would do in your household, I think, uh, you prioritize. If you have to cut, you look at the areas that are most critical and are most sensitive. And if education and health are uh, two of the areas that you would want to try as much as possible to stay as far away from as possible, then you do so. Of course, um, given all the public health issues that we're having, uh, the, the various mosquito-borne illnesses and 
potential for Ebola or whatever the case may be. Uh, you have to make sure that you're on top of your game in that regard. So you will try as much as possible to stay away from them. Um, equally as well, um, national security. It's another area that we want to ensure that you do not compromise because uh, security is a large part of the ability of the country, both as a tourist destination but also naturally for Barbadians. So uh, those types of installations, police, defense force, uh, fire service and so forth and so on. Uh, so you work around those uh, and you try to isolate those and then you uh, would make your adjustments in the other areas that would be considered to be uh, important but not necessarily absolutely critical. Now, also in the Central Bank uh, report, it indicated that foreign capital inflows had picked up. Uh, this was estimated at 399 million. This is compared to 173 million last year. How much of foreign capital inflows was made up of foreign borrowing? Uh, the reason I'm asking is because the report um, is not specifically clear if to there was an increase in foreign direct investment and how much was any increase in fact? Yes, there was an, an, an increase uh, uh, of over $150 million in foreign direct investment uh, uh, over the last, with a period over th for the year on year, year to date. Um, the monies which you would have been referring to in relation to uh, the foreign borrowings uh, recorded for this year would have been the smaller amount of the Credit Suisse loan that we would have taken out, uh, what we call the green shoe. Uh, I believe $70 million, if my memory serves me correctly, that would have come in, uh, $70 million US dollars, if my memory serves me correctly, but that would have come in March. So uh, that, uh, the substantial amount of those resources that you've seen there in relation to foreign inflows are uh, not from borrowing. 